And just to review, clipperheritagetrail.com is the website, a series of uh, self-guided history tours and brochures and maps. And uh, one, uh, the American Association of State and Local History uh, Merida Award uh, several years ago, very proud. Okay, and there's the website uh, homepage. And uh, so a few years ago, I decided, okay, I've got to put this web page, uh, the website into a book. And so I started off about three or four, uh, three years ago. And I, just, I decided um, after doing all this work that one book you were going to have to carry around in a knapsack because it was just going to be so big. So I had to split the book into two volumes. And so volume one was published last uh, June. It focused on the downtown. And uh, I've had loads and loads of positive feedback. So now I'm working on volume two. And let's take a look at this photograph. You know where we are? Come on, you know, that's right. We're in the Unitarian steeple looking down on In Street prior to 1968 when uh, the restoration of downtown began. Okay, and there's volume one. I, I still love this book cover. And uh, there'll be a so similar one for volume two. And that's Market Square on the right, a busy, busy time in the 1890s. And then on the left, you're looking up State Street. Okay, so volume two, uh, very similar, similar uh, design. Uh, there'll be nine tours again, uh, maps and legends. I've written about 90 locations slash uh, people in our history, and there'll be about 400 images. And this book is focused on Maudsley State Park all the way to Plum Island and in between. Okay, and here's a look uh, at the tours. Uh, Merrimack Street along the water's edge, talk about shipbuilders, Bartlett Mall, uh, up along. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Where is up along? You know that. Here and there in the South End, uh, Jopper, our little favorite neighborhood in the South End, and to the sea. Okay, so here's some highlights. Here we go. Now, I'd love to use different images to help tell the story. So let's go clockwise up top left. That is a footprint, a Sanborn uh, map and a footprint of the Bailey Hat Factory that was located up on Upper Merrimack Street. In the middle, top middle, that is a, a sketch from our well-known, very own uh, local artist, Laura Coombs Hills. On the right is an image of St. Paul's. We are very fortunate in Newburyport, in the Newburyport community, is the thousands of images we have of our community. And we are very, very fortunate. Even uh, uh, we have more images of our community than Boston does. Very fortunate. Houses the Museum of Old Newbury, the Library Archives, Custom House, Historic New England, uh, and private uh, collections. On the bottom right, um, including three cemetery tours in this volume, Old Hill Burying Ground, Highland Cemetery behind Bartlett Mall, and Oak Hill Cemetery. In the lower uh, center photo is uh, a silhouette. And I had this uh, a question uh, from uh, actually someone who reviewed the volume one book, and they asked, geez, I don't know about the different ships. I need to understand a little bit more. So because of that, I thought, okay, we think of ships are all looking the same, but they're not. And so I have about a dozen silhouettes that you can see the different types of hull design and then all of the different masts, how many masts are there, the location of the mass, uh, the sails and the size and the location. And then on the left is one of my favorite all times is the city directories and they have wonderful, wonderful ads in the city directories. And you can look at those directories down in the library archives. And I just love, love the city directories. Though I must admit, I think I, I love warm chocolate chip cookies and my chainsaw just a little bit more. Okay, here's tour one along the water's edge. This tour goes from the Newburyport Salisbury Bridge all the way up to the chain bridge. And you can see some of the topics uh, that will be 
covered in this tour. Again, uh, my wonderful graphic designer, Paige, I just, uh, I send her uh, city maps and she comes up with these wonderful uh, maps and legends. And there'll be one for each uh, tour again in volume two. Okay, here we are. And where are we? Remember, we started on Merrimack Street. Yes, this is the corner of Bridge and Merrimack Street. And this is the Great Fire of 1934. We kind of wiped out that whole area now. Um, that's uh, the big boat yard now and uh, Michael's Harborside area. Bossy Gillis sign on the left, survived. All right, oh, I love this photograph. Okay, where are we? We are standing right, Salisbury, looking over to Newbyport. And what is this area right now? It is Cashman Park and the Clipper City Rail Trail that runs in front of it. And you'll learn all about Michael Cashman, our mayor, who was uh, the catalyst for our Cashman Park. Okay, oh, this is an easy one. You know this building. Yes, the toll building. And what was the building actually constructed for originally? Anybody? The Ballad Rifle. Yes, the battle, Ballad Rifle was built here. And then eventually toll sil silversmiths took over the building. Ah, oh, beautiful photograph, beautiful. Look at that. On the right, you know, Chain Bridge and the center, Deer Island. And then on the left is the Essex Merrimack Bridge. And maybe some of you didn't know it, but there was part of that bridge covered. We had a covered bridge there. And today it's known as the Derek Hines Bridge. Okay, shipyards and shipbuilders. Uh, since the 1700s, we've had dozens and dozens of shipbuilders, okay? Um, and many of the shipyards, the big shipyards were on Upper Merrimack Street. And these are some of the highlights of the ship uh, builders and yards. Look at that photograph, wow. So on the right, you can see there are two vessels and most of the shipyards would work on two vessels at a time. On the right, you can see the top part of the vessel, that's the framing. And then below they've started the planking. And then on the left, you can see that vessel has been just about completed with the planking and look at all the lumber in the foreground. Oh, this is one of the shipyard gangs, huh? Gentlemen, lots of beards and goatees there, hats. And the shipyards would have um, the specialists. So there were the framers, uh, there were the plankers, there were the carpenters, there were the, um, the blacksmiths and so forth. And some of these gangs would go from shipyard to shipyard. Wonderful photograph. Look at the expanse. This is a wonderful photograph to show the size of um, a shipyard. This is at the foot of Ashland Street. And uh, so over on the right, you've got the blacksmith area. Um, and then there's a smaller vessel being built. You can see it's framed. And then over on the left is the Symington uh, vessel. And, um, and then the buildings on the left, again, there's the workhouse and um, uh, another uh, workhouse on the left, far left, that was part of Che Shaman. And in the background, you can see the river. So they're going to launch right into the river. And then what's across the river? That is Car Island. Yeah, Car Island. So when they launched the vessels, they had to be very, very careful not to slide across the surface of the river and then crash into and get stuck uh, on the island. Okay, this is a launching. Thousands of people would come to Newbyport via Huss and Carriage, you can see, uh, and then also on the train. And you can see that there aren't any masts or sails right now. What they would do is launch in the river, they would tug down the river, and then on the other side of uh, the Salisbury Newport Bridge, and then pull up at one of the Riggers Wharf, uh, and which is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the wharfs, the Cushing Wharf, uh, rigged hundreds and hundreds of uh, vessels, and they would put up the masts and the spas and the sails and the cabinetry work and so forth. And there's 
the John Currier, 1800 ton John Currier being tugged out uh, of the mouth of the river. And most of the time, these large uh, vessels would be tugged all the way to Salem or Boston, maybe even New York, because they did not have ballast. They didn't have cargo in the vessel. So if they got outside the mouth of the river, hoisted the sails, and they were so light, they might have been blown all the way to Africa. So they were tugged uh, to pick up their cargo. Okay, tour three, around the frog pond, pond uh, Bartlett Mall, you see closely, Bartlett has two T's. This is getting edited as we speak. Um, and so what was happening around the Bartlett Mall? Okay, beautiful photographs. Huh? You know what that building is, Cough, uh, the courthouse. Longest running courthouse in the United States, continuously running courthouse. And on the left photo, what's that uh, building over on the right side? Hmm, what is that? School, right, right. Okay, <clears throat> it may be a little tricky. Remember, we're at the botlet now. What are we standing in front of and what are we looking at? That's right, we're standing in front of the courthouse and we're looking down Green Street. On the left is the Putnam Free School, which eventually became uh, the New Report High School. And it burned uh, down in the 40s, 1940s. And then the church, that's the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church. And that was the steeple, the original steeple that also burned down in the 1940 fire. Okay, one of the oldest photographs in the United States taken by our very own Dr. Henry Perkins, medical doctor who had a practice on Essex Street. And this is looking across the frog pond and what buildings are those? 1825, the Auburn Street Jail. Okay, as I mentioned, again, uh, there will be uh, short tours that you'll be able to take Old Hill Bearing Ground, and on the right, that is Highland Cemetery. Okay, tour four, up along. Okay, volume one was down along, description of down along. Where was down along? Down along is from State Street to Marble Street. That's the old term, down along. And then up along, State Street up to three roads. So here are some of the people and the places that I'm writing about in tour four. All right, another wonderful photograph here. Isn't it a beautiful view? Looking towards the river. What church is there is on the left. It's a little tricky now. Yeah, that's the Baptist church, Mission Oak. And that was the uh, original steeple that was taken down uh, in the 1940s. It was getting old and it wasn't uh, holding up. And then the building to the right, that's right, City Hall. And then over on the right is our Unitarian Church. And where are we standing? This is a little trickier. Standing in the Harris Street Meeting House steeple, uh, which burned down in the 1980s. And it was um, the Greek church. And now we have uh, the Greek church there on Harris Street, which resembles Greek churches as in Greece. Okay, uh, this is one of the wonderful stories I happened upon. This is Ann Withington. We had a wonderful um, uh, movement, a suffragette movement, um, the women's vote. And I write about that story. And uh, as you can see on the newspaper article over on the right title, over 2000 women voted for the first time in the 1920 election. And, oh, here we go. Left picture, look at that left photo. What's that white, those white planks? That's a railroad crossing. And where are we standing? Washington Street, right? And this is the Clipper City, and now it's the Clipper City Rail Trail that's crossing Washington Street. And on the right, there's our uh, railroad depot, the passenger pickup there. And now is the rail trail and those uh, town uh, houses, the condos along Winter Street. Now the top picture, okay? Visualize this. This used to be a whole neighborhood, 
Over a hundred houses were raised for what? The Route 1 bypass. And look in the center, right center of the picture along the tree line. And that church steeple is St. Paul's. So do you know where you are now? At the corner of Washington and Winter Street. And on the right photo, this is what High Street looked like. All those buildings on the right are gone. That's where the overpass is now. All right, this photograph. We're standing in the park, a parking lot, which is still there. And we are looking across what street? Kent Street, yes. And see the lower buildings in the forefront? Those are condos now. The building on the right was part of the uh, cotton mills and eventually Whitefield uh, Mills and then eventually the Burley Stevens Shoe Factory. Those were that building was torn down, but then the building on the left in the background is still there. Wonderful photograph. Okay, tour five, it continues up along the long way. So up along bound for three roads and beyond. Talk about different people and Anna Jake's Hospital, the Patton family, Maudsley State Park and the Powder House. Okay, where are we? Yes, Mount Rural. This is where Newburyport High School is located now. Wonderful photograph. We're standing on High Street and uh, uh, top of Toppins Lane. Okay, and the buildings on the left and the right, you probably might recognize the ones on the right. That's Anna Jake's Hospital. And on the left is a corner of Broad uh, and Monroe and uh, they converted a mansion. And thank you to Anna Jake's uh, who donated $25,000 for our first hospital. Look at this photo. Where's the hint? The hint is on the right, the gazebo. Yes, we're on High Street looking at Ackerson Common, the land donate, donated uh, in memory of her father, Margaret Ackerson. And up along and towards three rows, not three corners, three rows. So on the left where the electric trolley is coming from, that is Story Ave. And then the middle road is, yes, Ferry Road. And then on the right, Mosley Ave. Molten Castle. Now this, uh, I learned, uh, I knew about Molten Castle, but I learned the connection. Uh, a friend gave me a book and she says, have you read about the, the Wonder Woman story? I said, no, no. She says, well, there's a section about New Report. I thought, oh my goodness. So I read it and there was a connection. Does anybody know Wonder Woman and the Molten Castle? It is. Here's the story. Henry Moulton built the castle. His grandson, Edward Moulton Marston, was a toddler who played at Moulton Castle. And uh, several decades later, he and the two uh, women in his life uh, created the first woman heroine in the comics. And that was Wonder Woman. Wonderful story. Okay, tour six, here and there, all around the South End neighborhood, right? Again, the mention, uh, photographer, uh, Dr. Perkins, uh, Hiram Ma uh, McIntosh, another photographer. Right. Okay, uh, there's Mr. Enoch Flanders. What's he got in his hand? A bell. The left photo was looking at Market Square. Mr. Flanders was one of the last town criers in the United States. And a town crier, what would they do? They were, they were out there uh, <clears throat> advertising for different businesses and also announcing the latest news. Oh, this is kind of tricky. This church, where was this church? Yes, that's the Prospect or Temple Street Church on the corner of Prospect in Fair Street. Now there's a, a parking lot and condos. And who's that gentleman on the right? Yeah, Frederick Douglass, who came to Newburyport and spoke at the Prospect Street Church. This is a very cool photograph. Okay, where are we? That church on the left is pretty tricky. That's going to throw you. We're looking down Fair Street. 
And on the, con on the right corner, that's Spring Street. So we're looking down towards Middle Street and that church, anybody know the name? The Universalist Church. Yes. And this is kind of tricky. What are those lines sticking up in the skyline? What are those lines? At the foot of Fair Street was the Cushing's Riggers Wharf, and those are ship masts sticking up in the skyline. skyline. Okay, again, uh, this on uh, the south end, uh, there'll be a tour of Oak Hill Cemetery. Okay, south end neighborhood, a little bit more, lots of folks in the south end. You can see the Yacht Club and the churches, abolitionist Richard Plummer, and uh, Bethany's favorite, favorite guy, Private Evan Brad, Bradbury. Beautiful story. And Candy Brown. Love Candy Brown. Okay, this photograph, beautiful photograph, isn't it? Probably by Selwyn uh, Reed. Beautiful. It's an American Yacht Club. Good, good. Yeah, and that chimney, I was so excited uh, looking at some other, another photograph that will be in the book. But see the Yacht Club on the right? See that very wide chimney um, that is still there. So the next time you're down there, you look for that chimney. Okay, ah, uh, another wonderful aerial view. And we're looking at, what's that large building? Remember we're in the South End. Yeah, the James Steam Mill. That's the James Steam Mill and we're standing in the Old South Steeple. Yeah, we're looking down, the forefront is uh, Beck Street. And looking at James Steam Mill and off to Plum Island. Okay, any old timers from Newbyport? You went to school here, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Yeah, Jackman School. Yes, I went there and it is now Atwood Park. Okay, here's our story. Bethany wrote a beautiful book uh, on Private Eben Bradbury. And, um, uh-oh, what happened? Hey, everybody, can you see it, Bethany? We okay? I don't know what happened. You can, um, you can see it, just go back up to your display settings or yeah, uh, and switch it out again. Um, stop video, it doesn't have those. It doesn't have, That's it good. doesn't have an original bar. No, nope, just okay. go, up to the, go up to the top where it says display settings and pull, pull it down. It's not um, just, just carry on people. I'm can. carrying on because it doesn't have that original one. Okay, sorry folks. Um, <clears throat> and Evan Bradbury, the memorial, anybody ever drive by that big boulder on Bartlett Mound? This is in, in memory of Evan Bradbury uh, who was killed in World War I. Okay, tour eight, Joppa, a little favorite South End neighborhood and Flatiron Point. And what's that view there? We're looking at a railroad crossing down Water Street. And on the left, yeah, that's Joppa Park on the left. And the water used to wash right over along with all the seaweed and land on Water Street. This is the crossing of the Clipper Rail Trail. Okay, a beautiful photo from the water and still used today. That's the slip. Uh, known to us South Enders, and that's uh, Janvin's Landing, where you put boats in. That's a great shot. And there's another, look at on the right, there's those white planks. That's another railroad crossing. And that is, think about it, that's the rail trail. It's crossing Purchase and Harris Street. And that is Hicks and Tibbetts Bakery on the left. All right. <clears throat> this is a tough one. This building was torn down in the 1940s and Newbyport was the place uh, for making uh, decorative combs and the Noyes family uh, started that and people from all over the country would consult the Noyes uh, family uh, about uh, the different machinery and techniques and so forth making combs. Uh, this is Guesses where it is? There's the clam shacks on the right. We're looking towards town. This is Flat Iron Point. Water Street on the right and Union Street on the left. 
And the last tour, To the Sea, Bummer's Rock, Spencer Pierce Little Farm, the airport, the hotel, the lighthouse, and down uh, in the wildlife refuge. Okay, after the rites, uh, but very close uh, to that time period, we had experimental uh, planes uh, flying over the marshes. And that's a wonderful story. Uh, the Plum Island Hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was some renovations and additions on the right photo. And the Plum Island Hotel was located where? Anybody know? When you on, when you approach after the bridge, you approach uh, the then gas station on the left, and that's where the hotel was. Plum Island was a happening place in the late 1800s. Uh, lots of folks uh, coming around to stay at the hotel and dine on local uh, fish and game. This is uh, a photograph. Can you see where we are? The ocean is on the right. And we're looking down Northern Boulevard. This is the center, big dance hall, lots of activity here. And oh, what a photograph, huh? What's in the center? Yep, there's the lighthouse. So you can see over the left, where now Reservation Terrace is washing away. There's no housing there. See so all the, the um, houses, there's not many, many there now. Um, and so that's a wonderful photograph of long time ago in the early 1900s. And, oh, this is wonderful right here. Anybody guess what this is? This is one of the first, or the first, uh, polio camp in the United States. And it was uh, located down in what's now the Wildlife Refuge. And that building on the right was used as a life-saving station. And the Harrington family started this camp for uh, children with polio and other disabilities. And they just, there weren't any camps uh, for children with disabilities. And so we thank the Harrington family for all their hard work. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And um, again, um, you can contact me, uh, but does anybody have any uh, comments or uh, questions? And Bethany, uh, let's see. I want to stop share, correct? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Sorry for the little techno. I don't know. I breathe, I guess, too heavy. Uh, so let's go. OK, well, there are a, a number of questions here. So thank you, everyone who submitted questions. Glee is so good about being super punctual. So we have some time. It's wonderful. Uh, Hannah asks, can you talk a little bit about where and how you do your research? Uh, you know, when I began back in um, actually 2005, I knew nothing about local history and I had lots of people teaching me and uh, Cecile Pimentel at the library archives and the museum of Old Newbury and so forth. So um, it just, uh, from there, so definitely um, library archives and uh, the museum of Old Newbury. And my father had a small library and I have expanded on my library. Uh, so books, this is the vital records, cemetery um, uh, records, and then the whole library down at the archives, some at the museum. And so that's, that's the basic. Um, and then uh, in recent years, uh, all, obviously always uh, the New Report Daily News and other newspapers used to have to go on the, the machines down in the archives, but thankfully we've got wonderful grants at the archives to digitize the newspapers. And so I've been able to do a lot of that work at home. Um, I'll do all my research, for example, I, what research I do at the library archives or the museum, I bring it home to me. Um, and I bring, and that's where I, I start doing the writing uh, at home. But definitely the library archives um, is, the, is the top place where I go. Wonderful, thank you. All right, uh, Patricia asks, any thoughts on an audio book or audio tour, since you're clearly such a wonderful speaker? Oh, uh, no, but hey, I'm open, absolutely. Um, and uh, sure, that, that could happen, absolutely. Um, I, I definitely want to get this book done, and uh, but certainly that could happen, and I uh, just have to get all those 
uh, folks who specialize in that sort of thing to kind of round me up and, and help me out with that. But I, definitely, I'm open to this. All right. So contact Glee if you'd like to help with that endeavor. <laughs> All right. Uh, Stephen asked, who are your favorite authors? Um, well, history, if we're talking about local history, uh, John J. Curia, uh, you, you know, thank you. He's got four volumes plus a book on um, shipbuilding. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you to Mr. Curia. I mean, we would not have the history without um, uh, Curia. And then the different, um, I um, let's see, off the top of my head, I have to look at my library. Oh, uh, Cheney for shipbuilding. Uh, the Marine Society book, um, the um, books on uh, Civil War. So if, if that's what you're asking, if it's local history, um, that I do have other favorite authors in general that I read, but uh, that's the local history. Um, I also just want to remind our viewers, we are taking questions in the Q&A feature. I see some chat uh, questions coming through, but I have a hard time seeing those. So if you have a question, uh, please pop it into the Q&A. We have uh, a couple more minutes to answer questions. I will ask a completely self-serving question from my dear friend, Robin, who said, what is the name of Bethany's book and where can we buy it? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. Tell them. Tell them. Oh, it is uh, Newburyport Marine in World War I, uh, the story of Evan Bradbury. And uh, as Glee said so wonderfully, you know, he is uh, memorialized all over Newburyport, but his own family story is uh, quite a tragic one and has become part of my part of my life. So you can buy it at any local bookstore. I encourage you to do that. Um, or you can contact me. My website is bethanygroftero.com. You can purchase it there. Um, so that's that, but you know, make sure you buy Glee's book as well. And thank you for including him in that book as well. Uh, we have a question from Ted and actually it's the same uh, question that Nick asked, which is how, what year was the photo you said was one of the oldest in the country? Uh, so the first photograph was taken in 1839 by a gentleman whose name I don't recall. And then our very own Dr. Henry Perkins took a couple months later, the first aerial view photograph. So 1839, uh, the jail was probably 1840, 41. Wonderful. All right, and Anne asks, what are you researching now and what is next? So uh, volume two, I'm finishing up. Um, uh, my editor's got uh, a few uh, eight or nine passages that uh, needs to be edited. My graphic designer is working on um, the maps and the design of the chapters. Afterwards, um, I, I need to rest. I'm taking a break. And uh, when I had last summer's break, I read seven books, just enjoy for enjoyment. So I know I'll be reading some books and then uh, maybe a little family history. And um, I will be um, uh, eventually tiptoe through the tombstones, Oak Hill Cemetery, volume two. I might, I'll start in another year or two. Wonderful. You know, there's a, a wonderful whaling captain and gold miner who happens to be Evan's grandfather that's in Oak oh. Hill. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Maybe I, maybe I can uh, actually do yes. You showed me where his grave is. Yes, I did. I did. So you you can write about him. You're welcome. I would be happy to. Okay. He's a he's a fascinating character as well. Uh, so Robin asked Glee, what what living local historians do you work with? Living local historians. What well, yeah. Bethany? <laughs> Bethany, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of us who enjoy local history. Um, is Jack Santos and the folks at the Museum of Old Newbury and people at the Library Archives. And um, we just kind of share resources. We're a great community helping each other out. Um, and uh, as far as our research or our presentations, questions come up and, and so forth. I, I think people will come to me uh, when it comes to cemeteries. Can you help find so-and-so? But, um, you know, that photograph of Fair Street looking down um, towards Cushing's Wharf, that was, uh, Jack Santos had it. And I said, Jack, where'd you get that photograph and blah, blah, blah. So we, oh, we are all very, um, a great community of local historians keeping Newburyport history alive. 
Absolutely. I, I call you when I have a question about dead people or the moats also. The moats have been. Yes, the moats. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, and wild. And it's just such a such a wealth of people who are, are on. Yes. And not all communities have us. That's not true. all not all communities, I said, have our photographs. Uh, not all communities have our history books and not all uh, communities have currently our uh, whole uh, pool of local historians. Absolutely, we are blessed indeed. Uh, all right, we've got time for a couple more questions. Uh, Sandra asked, I don't, if you haven't read this book, this may not, uh, may not work for you, but we'll ask the question anyway. I read the book Quarantine about the yellow fever epidemic. What people, place and place descriptions might be based on real people or homes? I don't know. We definitely had yellow fever. We had the, uh, the, uh, sick sick homes i can't think of the name down on plum island and out on um hale street so definitely there was a concern then ships would have to stop at plum island and be checked to make sure the sailors um did not have any illness if they did um then they were uh stopped on plum island so was there a quarantine facility on plum island if they were found? yeah I, yes yes on plum island yeah fascinating now there's now i have to go read that book thanks sandra all right, Cynthia asks, what books on the Civil War would you recommend pertaining to Greater Newburyport? Uh, Bill Hallett's book, The Civil War, and um, there is a um, Newburyport book, uh, and I can see it. It's here. Uh, there's another big uh, Civil War book, but Bill Hallett, he published, I don't know, eight, eight years ago or so on the Civil War, so take a look at that. These books are in um the um library archives you can check them out uh, look at them not check them out look at them <laughs> there's probably copies upstairs that you can check out well that's actually a wonderful segue to the next question which is that if you have a library card can you take archives I, archive items out of the library or do you have to photocopy items of interest yeah you can take photos photocopies and so forth and some of the collection uh is upstairs that you that you can take some of those books out if they're upstairs in the reference area, but library archive materials stay. But they're very generous. You, again, you can do photocopies um, and um, uh, pitches. Uh, you can take photographs of the materials that you want to use. Wonderful. Oh, we have a question from my friend Javon who asks, how far west were ships built? How far west? Uh, well, if you're looking at New York, that's uh, west, uh, they have to have water. Well, oh, so I think she meant in Newburyport. Oh, like, I'm sorry. How far, you know, <laughs> I was like, how far west? All the way up the chain, up the river. Well, uh, they went up to Haverhill. There was Amesbury building. There was some uh, Haverhill uh, ship building, not so much, uh, but um, mostly it was Newbury, Newburyport, uh, and Amesbury. So in Newburyport, you know, you imagine crossing, I think a lot of people didn't know that the that there were shipyards on the other side of what, what is now Route 1. So how far did the shipyards go in Newburyport, you know, down towards Mosley Pines kind of? Oh, right? all the way up to Mosley Pines, I'm sorry. Yes, all the way up. The main ones were from, uh, say, the um, just after Cashman Park up to uh, Chase Shawmut. Uh, it's Merson now up in that area. That, that's where the big shipyards, most of them were right there. And that's what the volume two book will focus on those shipyards. Excellent. All right, I think we have time for just a couple more quick questions. Um, Thomas asked, are you giving tours? Uh, I'll be giving tour. There's a tour scheduled uh, at the Museum of Old Newbury. You can go on their website. I'll be doing a tour uh, the first week of May. Um, uh, at Old Hill Burying Ground. Um, and then um, uh, probably for Yankee Homecoming, everything's just up in the air with COVID. Um, and then Bethany and I have talked about maybe doing a series uh, of tours, uh, you know, summer and fall. Um, so, and I always take requests. Um, it can be, they're free, you know, if you have two or three people or a dozen people, it doesn't matter. And of course, with COVID, you know, it's probably the mass thing. Or so, so that might be if you're looking for a tour, contact me. Um, but yes, uh, tours will come back this year. Wonderful, thank you, Lee. All right, last question from John. Actually, 
and we've got another very specific one, so I'll ask that one as well. But from John, he said, I came in late. Where can we see the photos after the webinar? I will tell you that this is uh, live on Facebook, so you can go to the Newburyport Literary Festival um, Facebook page, and eventually it will also be on the Newburyport Literary Festival YouTube channel. Uh, so just keep an eye on the Literary Festival and you can see these pictures. And then of course you can buy the book as soon as it's available. Uh, the Newburyport Literary Festival um, should announce the book when it comes out. I'll see if I can. We should sure. do so keep an eye on the Literary Festival webpage. And volume one, I have uh, copies of volume one and that has almost 400 images too. So you can contact me too. Incredible collection. Okay, last question here. What do you know about the shipbuilder who built the mansion at 51 Woodland? Very specific, but if anybody knows <laughs> it's you. <laughs> I don't, you got a name? Is there a Caria? Is it, uh, let's say Woodland. Uh, I don't, I don't know. You'd have to give a name. <laughs> That's a tough I have question. to tell you, I, I, I hesitated to ask that question because it's sort of, you know, it's, <laughs> some of these, you know, immediately you're like, oh yeah, that was so, yeah. and, so and some, you know, you just don't. You don't know necessarily, but if anybody would know, it would be you. So yeah. uh, Jean, who asked that question, if you would like to get in touch with Glee and um, maybe uh, she can point you in the direction of doing a little uh, additional research. Research, or, yeah. Or yeah, definitely that. library archives. Yep, yeah, absolutely. The yeah. Report Preservation Trust also does a wonderful job helping with uh, with homeowner research. So you will you will likely uncover a, a treasure. Yes. Oh, yeah, you will. Um, and then actually we had a question from Anne who said, uh, would you talk about if this house could talk, which is a, a program mm -hmm. that has started uh, headed by Jack Santos. Yes. I believe that you've been involved in that. Yeah. yeah. Um, if this is a talk, it's, it's happening again during Yankee homecoming. Uh, Jack's uh, he was visiting his son out towards Boston several years ago and he gathered a bunch of us and said, what do you think? And so uh, there is help if you want to participate uh, there was, I think, almost uh, 80 or 100 houses last year, and again this year, so it's not too late if you need some help doing house research, they're going to do some workshops, but you can also make an appointment down in the library archives, and it's all over town. Most of the houses are on this side of uh, State, State Street in the south end, but there are more and more houses coming up on, um, in, the, in the north end, so please participate. Yeah, and just if you've never heard of the program, uh, we individual houses in Newburyport uh, sort of folks do some research and they, you know, it's a way of telling the story of the house with a sign. So you can yeah. walk around and these houses will talk to you as you go. It's really a wonderful, a wonderful uh, uh, part of our local history. And thanks to you and Jack and various other folks who really got that up and running. So I'm afraid that's all the time we have. We still have a, a number of questions that were asked. I guess uh, it's nice to leave them wanting more, right? So yeah, I yeah. want to thank all of you for joining us. Please feel free to contact Glee. She is so generous with her knowledge and wisdom. Uh, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer your question in another way. Um, do you want to just tell people how they can contact yeah, you? Yeah, you can call me at 978-462-2010. I'm in the book, the old-fashioned phone book. And then also you can email me at all regular spelling words, tiptoe through the tombstones at yahoo.com. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you again, Glee. It was wonderful. This was at my first session of the day. You did great. <laughs> you, uh, you just did a wonderful job and I am excited to see you in real life very soon. So okay. Thank you everyone for joining. And we've got a whole lineup today. There may be some rain, so you might not have anything to do. So uh, join us for some other sessions. So thanks everybody. Take care. Bye everyone.